Well, uh, we're super excited uh, today to get a chance to talk to Carl Pauli from Freestyle Connection. Uh, he's going to be our guest. I'll, I'll, I'll stop talking, though, because he's a lot more interesting, and, and we'll jump right into it. Um, so, Carl, can you tell us a little bit about your background in competitive sports? Yeah, I grew up in Spain doing gymnastics competitively, and uh, when I was eight, nine, I learned what the Olympics were, so I set goal to yeah. make it there. And uh, by the time I was 15, 16, I was starting to get plagued with in injuries and uh, the teenage mindset, which uh, led me to struggle until I was 18, 19, and then realizing that those years that were uh, fundamental to my foundation of being able to get to the highest level of gymnastics uh, set me back and off course. So I decided to retire from gymnastics and then got into action sports and eventually found fitness. Awesome. Awesome. And um, how has failure shaped your success now? You know, talked about the, you know, the foundational years and kind of realizing it set you back. So how did that how did that failure maybe set you up to succeed later on? Yeah, it just gives you a sense of awareness. One of the things that I talk about a lot is this notion that trying to sell people on preventative medicine is uh, practically impossible. So uh, one of the things that we want to do is we want to get people first excited about the things that they uh, they want to do and yeah. then try to give them the tools to be able to develop those with the assumption that you are going to fail every day but every single one of those failures is great feedback to be able to give you the insight that you need to make the next decision take the next step and simply be able to adhere to a process that over time will give you an outcome whether it looks like going to the olympics losing weight moving more effectively healing from an injury regardless you are uh, progressing. And that's what is, to me, exciting. And that's what failure has really taught me. Awesome. How how important is that? You know, you talked about finding something you just enjoy when you exercise. How important is that? For me, it's extremely important. I, I personally uh, do not enjoy going to the gym nor training. But I do like learning. I do like learning new skills. I do like the challenge. I do like uh, playing a game. I do like uh, hanging out with friends. I do ha uh, like uh, having conversation and uh, coming up with new things. So the way that I think about training or fitness is in doing it uh, from a perspective of enjoyment and then within it, being able to find those edges and pushing myself there to really stretch myself and uh, yeah, get the results that I, uh, that I want to get. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I think and just enjoying stuff in general, it makes it so much easier. If you're just dreading doing whatever you're doing day after day for your fitness, it's gonna it's not gonna last long term. So um and I think we've already hit a little bit on this through some of the some of the things you said, but why is it important to continue to learn and grow and kind of what motivates you to do that just personally? Yeah, I think there is, uh, when it comes to uh, coaching, for example, one of my uh, missions is to help other people get their needs met. And if you think about needs uh, or the hierarchy of needs of uh, mm -hmm. through the Maslow's lens, yep. at the highest level, there has to be this uh, transcendence that occurs. So growth happens at that level, at the highest level of expression of human behavior. So if we don't have a system or an environment or a process that we can go through that can always allow us to get to that point of constantly being in a state of learning, uh, then we're not adapting, we're not evolving. And if we're, we're not evolving, then uh, we are at the mercy of this world, which uh, thankfully we live in a modern society. But uh, if we didn't, uh, it would end pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that, you know, that's been something I've. Uh, I've just been focusing on personally is just that constant growth. And it's, it's uncomfortable sometimes to put yourself in areas where you're uncomfortable and need to learn and grow. So it's not, it's not easy to do for sure. Um, so a little bit of a transition. Um, some people may or may not know that uh, you've done some coaching in CrossFit. How has that kind of exploded nationwide and how did you get involved in, and what attracts people to CrossFit do you think? 
Yeah, I think I think what attracts people to CrossFit is that it's uh, competitive. It looks a little bit different. It doesn't look uh, so uh, done up like uh, the stuff that you would see on magazines or typical infomercials. It's a little bit more raw and organic. And uh, what people end up finding within CrossFit when they join is that they are uh, very resourceful, meaning that every single person in the space is constantly trying to bring in the best from all different worlds and aspects of strength and conditioning. So I think mm -hmm. once you uh, find the, the edge of CrossFit and you realize that there's so much more, you, you just get drawn in. And I think, I think that's, a, that's a very powerful uh, aspect of what CrossFit has to offer. Yep. And can you talk a little bit about your your time coaching in CrossFit, I know you, um, you trained some, you've trained some professional CrossFit, uh, CrossFit athletes, Annie, uh, Thoris, um, Thoris Tatir, if I, I probably killed her last name. You yeah, know, you, you, you did kill it, but it's okay. It's a Annie Thoris daughter. Uh, yeah, that. coaching her was fantastic. And, and one of the things that allowed me to kind of set myself apart within the CrossFit space was my ability to teach gymnastics, which is wow. a component of the methodology. Yeah. And specifically teaching gymnastics in a way where it was not about the technique itself, but how those techniques would transfer over into all other techniques. So, for example, uh, when you practice the pull up, the pull up would translate into holding a barbell better on your back. So when you back squat, you have a more stable spine and with a more stable spine, being able to get more access to the hips and apply better force and doing that with all movements. And when it came to work with someone working with someone like Annie Thor's daughter, it was all about getting her ready so she would have a base line of fitness that she could apply to the CrossFit games, which are the highest level of performance for a CrossFitter. Yeah. Uh, but also be able to adapt to new challenges because one of the aspects of CrossFit is that they throw out things that you've never done before. So whoever can adapt the fastest or learn the fastest tends to win. So that was also one of the most important pieces to uh, developing uh, someone like Annie. And you talked about how your background with gymnastics has helped you kind of train her, but I was just thinking even for your business now, Freestyle Connection, how has your background helped you develop kind of the, the philosophy and the mission for Freestyle Connection as well? Yeah, I think uh, the overarching mission is to be able to help people move freely. And sometimes that looks uh, physical, sometimes it's mental, sometimes it's emotional. Yeah. And one of the most important things that we believe in at Freestyle is to accept and respect all styles, all disciplines, and to realize that we can learn from all of them. And it's up to us to gain that information so we can have knowledge. And then eventually what we do is we try to give our, our athletes and our communities the tools to apply that knowledge in context, which is mm. now them being able to pursue uh, their own expression of physical education, their own expression of movement. And uh, in gymnastics is the same thing. Artistic gymnastics, although you abide by a code, the style, the way that you do things, the, the artistry, is fundamental so um for us presentation is extremely important yeah it, it, that what you said there about presentation and just the artistic side makes me think of like i can't think of her name but the uh the gymnast from ucla who's kind of like blown up on social media she's, yeah, she's got the really interpretive like and it's getting people like i see people sharing stuff on my feed that normally wouldn't be into gymnastics but she has that like you said artistic and really has applied it in a in a unique way so yeah i think that organic and kind of like authentic approach is um is something that people nowadays appreciate in our our society it's what a lot of people look for i think it kind of ties into crossfit from the people that i've talked to who who really love it they love the kind of the organic and authentic approach to to it so mm -hmm. um, it sounds like that's a something really important to you yes yeah, very important um and so why should coaches not only train people, but also educate them? So instead of, you know, hey, just do this, you know, tell them why and help them to understand, you know, the benefits and 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 take that more teacher mentor approach. 
I mean, you don't need to if you don't want to grow. <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> if, if, if you care about evolving and you really care about your craft, which is helping other people get their needs met, you're going to have to become a student of life. And life mm. is ever evolving. Yep. This is why there are so many history books. This is why science is relevant. This is why we have a, a political discussion. This is why there are economists. This is uh, the reason why uh, the cultures that we know to be true and relevant today are uh, shaping the future that's coming. And we, us as human beings, regardless of our discipline, are responsible for that future. And that future is really the legacy that we're leaving behind for those who are coming. In addition to uh, respecting this environment that we live in, uh, which is yeah. this planet, which is just borrowed. So uh, if you're someone who cares about uh, anything beso besides yourself, oh, I, 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 would, I would highly encourage you to be a student of uh, life. Yep. Great. And then, um, you know, as I was researching for this uh, conversation we were going to have, I just noticed you've had your hands in, in so many different things, and it, it it really resonated. Just that entrepreneurial spirit. You've done gymnastics, CrossFit, coaching, uh, athletic shoe business, online training. Uh, what advice would you give someone who has a similar entrepreneur entrepreneurial spirit, but maybe doesn't know how to apply it or like what what to do next? Like, what's one one? If you could tell that person one thing that was kind of stuck but had that same same spirit as, as you, uh, what would you tell them? Well, it would be twofold. The, the first part of it would be to realize that if you choose, you're not losing. If you choose, you win. And I think there's a mindset with people who are maybe very creative and have a lot of ideas or are entrepreneurial and can see the opportunities out there to have this fear that if they choose, they lose. But mm. the, the reality is that if you choose, you win because that gives you focus and discipline. And the second side of this, the, the other side of the fold is to not focus so much on the outcome of what you're creating, but more so come up with what you're trying to solve in terms of the problem. And what is it that you as an individual or an organization does best in solving that problem? And if you can be a specialist within a great world uh, of opportunities, now you will start belonging. And with that, you will start transcending the specialty and the focus that you chose in the first place. Yeah, I, I love what you said the, with the first point. And I think that ties in so nicely with your perspective on failure and growth too. Like if you, if you see failure as choosing the wrong thing and then not you know, making a million dollar company, then yeah, it's really going to be tough. But if you see it as an opportunity to grow and learn and be a student and all the other things you've said, then it's just an opportunity to continue to be a better person and grow. So, um, and then you're also multilingual. Um, you mentioned living in Spain. Um, but if someone asked if they should learn another language, what advice would you give them? And how has, how has that experience in different cultures and learning language helped you as a coach and just as a person? Yeah, for, first and foremost, languages a lot of times are associated with linguistics, when in reality, languages exist in various forms. Uh, music is a language. Mm. Math is a language. Movement is a language. Uh, and we can, we, if we can just realize that, the first thing we realize is that we have more than one way to connect with the the world and to make an impact. So uh, if you're thinking about learning a new language, first of all, realize how many language you languages you currently speak. The second thing is, if you want to learn a language, what you'll, you'll realize is that eventually, if you immerse yourself in the language, you're going to have to immerse yourself in the culture. And when you immerse yourself in a culture, what will end up happening is that your belief systems will be challenged. What you have believed to be true up until this point will change. And the, the beauty of this is that whatever it is that you believe right now to be true, it doesn't die. It simply adapts. And it gives you a greater understanding and a greater perspective to look at things from different points of view. And when you do that, what ends up happening is that you create new space to grow into. And 
here's the beauty of it is that learning a language, uh, whether it's a physical movement, music, or a, an actual language from a different country, is that you're going to gain some inspiration because mm. you'll realize that the world is bigger than you thought it is. You're also going to be a little uh, enlightened. You're going to get some insight on new ways of doing things and realizing that you have more to say. And then you're also going to be a little confused because there are certain things that you won't understand. But that confusion, instead of being something that should, makes you feel defeated or uh, stops you, just realize that it's something that is opening you up to being able to grow. So take that uh, opportunity to to lean into being confused. Okay. And then um, everyone talks about now the pitfalls of social media. So we know know a lot about those. But in your opinion, what's the upside of social media? How has it maybe helped you personally or even with um, Freestyle Connection? And what's that been like for you? Yeah, I built an entire business off of social media and I've uh, been to, uh, built an entire team off of social media and I currently connect with every single person who has ever attended one of my seminars, which is over 35,000 people. Wow. Uh, I get to connect with them and, and re-engage with them. And as I continue to move the needle uh, in my business and my work, social media continues to be the place where I can use it as a journal. I can connect with people. I can uh, uh, use it as a, a, a history uh, log to go back in time and see where I was at and measure mm. how I've uh, moved forward. Yeah. And it, it's also allowed me to learn a new language because the language of social media is extremely powerful. And if you start realizing that there are different mediums within social media, uh -huh. there are different dialects. And as technology evolves, if you're not up to speed with social media, you are missing out on everything that has to do with growth and how we are shaping human society at this moment. So uh, it's a no-brainer to to lean into it and to realize that there are a lot of there are a lot of upsides and the the, the pitfalls of it. Uh, the most important part for me is to create a group of people around me that keep me in check. If you're posting only to make money, you're going to lose. If you're posting just to pose and to show the highlight reel of your life, you're going to lose. It's not yeah. going to serve you. But if you start posting your process and, and the truth about who you are as an individual, the right people uh, that you need at this moment are going to move towards you and uh, you'll be able to do something very special with it. And you, you already kind of hit on this. Um, but the next thing I was going to ask about was kind of that authenticity on social media and kind of avoiding the imposter syndrome. Um, and so I think, I don't know if you have anything else to add, but I think what you said there about, um, you know, being authentic and not just posting the highlights is is really important because it gives, it really does give you a skewed view of your own, your own life and also the people that you interact with as well. Yeah, this is a, this is a big one. I mean, the the truth is, and this is what I tell everyone. I, I tell everyone who I, I work with. I say, if if uh, I had it figured out, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Right. So it, the same thing happens with social media, and I tell everyone, I'm like, I'm a 37 year old white guy that lives in San Francisco, who is still trying to figure it out and figuring it out, and is simply sharing the process in the best way he can whether you uh, like it or not, because this is, this is all, all I've got. And uh, I think this applies to every aspect of our life, whether it's uh, family or business or uh, the things that we care about within fitness or our hobbies. I think that approach has a certain amount of humility and just saying, hey, this is where I'm at. Like I'm just, you know, kind of that learning learner teacher perspective um, that's, that has rings of authenticity on on something like social media. So um, I think once you've been punched in the gut a couple of times, uh, you have no other option. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Um, and then how did you, how did you first uh, come across exercise.com and how do you use it within freestyle connection? Well, funny enough, exercise.com actually reached out to me. I didn't know about it, and uh, we started talking, and that led to an opportunity to create a program 
and uh, to test the platform. And as the years have gone on, the, the platform has evolved. Yeah. Our relationship has evolved and it's allowed us to simplify the way that we make decisions and we present uh, the content that we have been presenting for uh, over a decade now on the platform. And the fact that you have the app and you can schedule uh, the times to train, it just uh, takes away a lot of admin work that mm. uh, we had to do. And now we can actually focus on the practice itself of coaching, which is uh, phenomenal. Yeah, and I think... You know, for someone like yourself who engages so well on social media, I mean, you talked about the about 35,000 people that you personally interact with. I think, um, you know, an online training is, is a perfect fit because really, you know, we've got lots of people that want to make money online, but, but, the, but don't. And really comes down to that personal connection. You still, just like you're training someone in person, you've got to have that same personal connection and people have to kind of like you and you have to show your personality there. So how have you, I don't know if there's anything different you'd like to add, but how have you been able to do that and kind of keep the authenticity that people appreciate with Freestyle Connection while also kind of growing your business online as well? Yeah. So one thing that we've done as of late, which has been great, is that we have, in addition to just the demo videos that are placed in the programming for all the alternative videos, what we've created are our tutorials. So we have hmm. two minute videos. And now what our students are doing is the day before their training, uh, they study all the videos. So we have more than a program. We actually have a course that people go through. And one of the nice. things that we are really inspired by right now is this notion of the infinite progression, which is this notion that even though we may have a four-week uh, muscle of master program for people to go through, it doesn't have to be completed in four weeks. And if it is completed in four weeks, they can start over again because our tutorials are set up so that uh, people have different focuses throughout their four-week cycles. Mm -hmm. And this is really empowering because it gives people the autonomy. It gives people the option of focusing and mastering one thing but still being fully aligned with their original purpose, whether it's to get a first muscle up or be able to perform it uh, with more repetitions or less pain uh, or whatever the goal may be. So that, that's that been a very uh, powerful uh, realization for us when it comes to using the platform. And um, again, we, we really appreciate your time and, and talking with us. So this last question is kind of open house. Is there anything else you'd like people to know about you or Freestyle Connection, anything you want to add? Yeah, the only thing I would say is that if you know something, if you have information, share that information and then be open to whatever comes your way and to change what you know, to adapt what you know, because what you know is, is a gift, but that gift can grow if you're willing to share it with other people and not try to hoard it. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Well, great. I think that's a great a great spot to end. And uh, again, thank you, Carl, for hanging out and talking with us. And um, yeah. Awesome. My pleasure. Thank you so much for the time.